Hey everyone, I'm Kyla. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about the stock market and the economy amongst other things. Today we're going to be talking about the Federal Reserve and all the different things that they did. I'm just going to be doing a very brief overview on what happened today. If you want a more in-depth overview, I talk about the Fed literally non-stop. I'll link to some videos below if you want to go check those out. This is just mostly around what happened today and what we can learn from for the future. Well, the market was having a bit of a sell-off coming into this Federal Reserve meeting today. The Fed can't really position around the market. They're more in charge of the economy, but the economy has also been very hot. We've had a lot of inflation. The jobs market has shown to be very tight because we have unemployment below 4%. So it seems like the Fed sort of has to do their job. A lot of people think that the Fed is behind the curve, that they're not moving at mon they're not moving on monetary policy as quickly as we need. The Federal Reserve, for a little bit of context, is in charge of monetary policy. So they're in charge of price stability in managing maximum employment. If either of those things are kind of out of whack, the Fed steps in. They're like, don't worry, we'll fix it. Bob the Builder style. And so the big question right now is the how versus the F of the Federal Reserve. So we know that things are hot. We know that the Fed has wanted to raise rates. Like we know that March was about the time that they were thinking of raising rates, run down, the, the taper was going to finish around that same time. And then we could start talking about, you know, the Fed actually selling assets off the balance sheet a little bit later into this 2022 year. A lot of things happened today to make people think that, okay, the Fed is actually moving a little bit faster, that we might see these things happen a little bit faster, that the Fed is aware that things are quote unquote quite hot. So that's why the Fed is doing this in the first place. And the stock market, of course, had a little bit of a freak out. Things seem okay. Microsoft had decent earnings yesterday, and that's really good for the whole tech sector. So like the Fed normalizing the economy isn't necessarily a reason the stock market should be selling off. There's other things that the Fed can't control, like geopolitics. So Russia is getting increasingly closer to invading Ukraine, and the Fed can't raise rates and prevent that from happening. So the Fed has these things that they can control. So this idea of price stability, this idea of maximum employment, that's kind of what they nudge nudge interest rates around in order to control. But there's all these external forces as well. Oil is near $90, which is not great. And and so let's get into what's going on. What did they announce today with regards to the press conference? So there's two different things that come out with regards to a Federal Reserve meeting. There is the press release, which kind of outlines what the Fed is feeling. And that's just basically we think it'll soon be appropriate to raise rates and we're going to take care of that. And we also released sort of these principles for managing the balance sheet. So you can expect us to start maybe talking about shrinking the balance sheet soon. And the whole thing was just like, you know, we kind of see inflation. We see it's out there. We see the labor market has improved. So we're aware and we're going to be working on that. So don't you worry. And and then after the press release is released, Jerome Powell has a press conference where he answers questions from reporters who usually throw him a couple hardballs. I'm going to be talking about both simultaneously, so what Powell said and then also what the press release said. Like I said, soon to be appropriate to raise rates. Inflation is way more than 2%, which is their goal, to inflation of 2%. Gotta raise rates. Strong labor market, gotta raise rates. Inflation has persisted longer than they thought and they'll use tools to make sure it doesn't become entrenched. And Jerome Powell actually said that he thinks inflation today is worse than it was in mid-December, meaning that things are very, very hot. He also points out that the labor market is strong. He's worried about wage growth, meaning inflation, and there's room to raise interest rates. This is what he said that freaked the market out a lot. There's room to raise interest rates without threatening the labor market. And now people are like, oh, Jerome Powell is going to hike, hike, hike every single meeting because there's room to raise rates now. Like there's room to keep on doing this. He thinks that there's also good reason to expect some further improvement in labor force participation. I also pointed out that the best thing for supporting the labor market is price stability. Inflation is the most important thing that the Fed kind of cares about right now. Of course, the labor market is really important, but inflation is political. And so they are going to probably raise the rate in March, which he kind of announced he was like, probably, and they'll continue to reduce asset purchases to end in March, which gets into this idea of the balance sheet. And so the balance sheet, Jerome Powell made it super clear that they have not made decisions on timing and the pace of shrinking the balance sheet. They're going to keep on talking about it. They did not talk about selling off the balance sheet, only rolling off, meaning that they're not going to be shrinking it. They're not going to enter a quantitative tightening that fast. And that's important because the Fed doesn't see it as that hot if they're not going to be talking about QT right now, but they will need to roll mortgage-backed securities off the balance sheet and they have to sell those probably. So we probably will see an element of selling just because they want only treasuries, not mortgage-backed securities, which will involve selling mortgage-backed securities off their balance sheet. They also published, like I talked about a little bit earlier, this principles for reducing the size of the balance sheet. Jerome Powell was like, hey, listen, you know, the market doesn't need support anymore. And this is meant to guide the actual decisions to be made. It's not saying like what we're going to do with regards to timing, with regards to pace, but hey, listen, like things have been easy and we're kind of shutting down your party. Like lights on, police are outside, cops are here. That's kind of what the Fed is doing. And at first the market was like, cool, like we kind of expected this, but then the market was like, oh my God, this guy 
guy's crazy. And it was wild to watch what the market did. Powell pointed out that he is very worried about inflation, and he also said that he thinks inflation is higher than it used to be, and the market did not like that, because that means that they're going to have to raise rates even faster, potentially, and that also Jerome Powell is going to price in a higher PCE forecast, and the market does not like inflation. Bonds don't like inflation, right? And so that is going to put pressure on the market just in general. And the big question kind of coming into this, which I thought was kind of crazy, but a big question coming into this was a 50 basis point raise in March. So normally the Fed moves in 25 basis point increments. And now there's this idea of a 50 basis point raise in March. So moving at, you know, double the pace. And I was like, no way will they do that. But Powell did not rule it out. Powell pointed out that the market is different this time, that this isn't the last time that they raised rates. He didn't really rule it out. And also he didn't really rule out raising rates every FOMC meeting, which would be a lot of rate hikes this year. And so that's a big question too. It's like, okay, if they do this big rate hike in March and also raise rates every single meeting, that's going to be fast. And so the bonds were like, whoa, they're going to be moving so freaking fast, dude. Like we got to price some of this in. And we saw two year yields go up because they were like, well, we got to take care of this now. Oh my gosh. And so that, that freaked the market out what Powell said there. And when pointing out yield curve inversion, which is a sign of a recession, usually Powell was like, we're not worried about it. We think that the spread between the two year and the 10 year is pretty good. And I talked about yield curves in my most recent video. If you want to go check that out, the two year kind of, you know, high, it moved. Bond markets are pricing in faster rate hikes. That curve is beginning to flatten a little bit because it's worried about this. It's worried about what these faster rate hikes could mean for future economic growth. Risk assets were not happy with the situation and also there wasn't a whole lot of guidance on the balance sheet. If they had given a little bit more guidance on the balance sheet, I think we could have seen things go down a little bit more. Powell kept on pointing out that the balance sheet is very high. The balance sheet is substantially larger than it needs to be. Substantial amount of shrinkage needs to be done. That will take time. We want that process to be orderly and predictable, which is like, whoa, like he is planning on moving it. He's planning on doing the thing. And he says that the labor market has basically reached maximum employment. He thinks that inflation will basically go away. He pointed out that supply chains are going to fix themselves and a, a journalist called him out and he was like, dude, semiconductors and ports are not going to be fixed anytime soon. Like, no. Jerome Powell was like, no, like they probably, they might be, like maybe. <laughs> and also pointed out that fiscal policy would go away. Also pointed out Eastern Europe. He highlighted just like general uncertainty, just general risks to the expansion. But the big thing, the big takeaway is that they can go every meeting, they can do things quicker, they can do things more. He wants the market to understand what he's doing, which it kind of does, but it also kind of doesn't because it's like, well, does the Fed even understand what the Fed is doing? Because they have not even had discussions hypothetically about some of this stuff. I'm sure they talked about it, but not to the point where they have decisions around it, right? The Fed kind of understands that they need to do something which is good and important with regards to how the market responded because that's also important you know the stock market's not the economy but it definitely is there was a huge movement in the two-year two standard deviation move Powell basically moved this around and that was mostly because of this idea of more rate hikes faster rate hikes 30-year bond was not happy risky long duration assets not happy and real yields are on the move too beginning to price in this idea of higher rate hikes from the fed increases in real yields which i talked about also in my last video they put pressure on asset valuations. <laughs> in order for the Fed to actually tighten financial conditions, real yields do need to rise. So we do need to see this happen. But that puts pressure on risk assets like tech stocks, like crypto, for example. The pace is really important here too. It'll be very interesting to see what real yields do because that could be a sign of when this um, tightening process will actually matter. USD strong. So people like it's, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, we hate the US economy now. People still believe in the US economy, but equities did take a little bit of nosedive. They did really well at first but then they were like, no, more rate hikes, not fun for us. And the volatility was huge. 8.7 VIX points intraday, just huge moves in volatility and uncertainty. The big question here, is the economy and markets divorced from one another? So if we, we see these huge movements in the stock market, stock market is not the economy and the market's not happy with the Fed. They're going to put pressure on the Fed and they're going to challenge them. That's what we see in the two-year. That's what we see in stocks. And that's important. What happens next? The market is now pricing in more than four rate hikes post press conference. The market it believes that the Fed is going to do it. I think confidence and will it work is maybe a different story. We do see potentially more rate hikes than expected. We do see potentially 50 basis points in March, and we do see inflation being here for a, a little bit as well. And so a couple questions that we have left are, you know, how much, how often? The market can often overprice this stuff. With the two-year, it's like, well, is it moving too quick? The two-year definitely is going to put some pressure on the Fed. We do see still strength in credit markets, but the Fed is going to have to be nimble, and we'll see how everything goes goes, but if we enter into a slower growth economy, which could be exacerbated by the Fed raising rates, that could be tough for stocks just in general. And so, yeah, it'll be interesting. 
However, the Fed is always prepared to adjust if economic conditions change, so we will see if they adjust. I have a whole notes page. I'm sorry that this video was a little bit under edited. I did want to get it out and I figure, you know, <laughs> It's all like, you know, it's all just speculation at the end of the day, but I have a whole notes page if you want to go read that where I have all my sources linked. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for spending time with me. I hope that you're doing well. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and hit subscribe, I will be back and we can chat a little bit more about monetary policy. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.